Hi, my name is Jocelyn Gayboy, and my favorite thing is the Avert Brothers. Welcome to the Finding Favorites podcast, where we explore your favorite things without using an algorithm. Here's your host, Leah Jones. Hey there, welcome back to Finding Favorites. I'm your host, Leah Jones. We are in that strange week in between Christmas and New Year's. Um, Things have slowed down a lot. In my family, we are postponing Christmas to New Year's in an effort to have us all quarantine and then drive straight to my sister's house. So I have just been home for well over a week with a couple errands here and there, but it's just me and the cats and my neighbor Ezra, who's my indoor pod person, watching movies and eating Chinese food, celebrating the final days of Hanukkah. Yeah, and just getting through the end of this year. Who knew that 2020 was a, I believe I've heard a couple people say the months were long and the year was short. Or maybe the months were short and the year was long. But 2020 is finally coming to a close. And I'm ready. I'm ready for 2021. I've been really excited this week watching my friends who are healthcare professionals and frontline workers all across the country get their first dose of the COVID vaccine. Such a relief to see, to see the vaccine rolling out. And it makes me so hopeful that in 2021, we will be back in person with each other. Live shows. Um, going to our synagogues and churches in person, spending more time with family, uh, going inside restaurants. I am I'm looking forward to the future. This week on the show, I have my dear friend Jocelyn Gayboy has joined me to talk about the Avet Brothers. The Avet Brothers are a band out of North Carolina. There's going to be a lot of links in the show notes to videos and album albums and a you still have a chance if you really enjoy the sound of this and you haven't made your New Year's Eve plan, the Ava Brothers have a New Year's Eve show that you could sign up for still as you figure out what to do on New Year's Eve. So I hope that everyone has been able to stay home and stay safe, wear your masks and keep washing your hands. And uh, the days are already getting longer. If you can believe it, we've passed this, the winter solstice, and in the northern hemisphere, the days are getting longer already. The darkest days are behind us. So, you know, take care of yourself, and uh, I'll see you next week. Hello and welcome to Finding Favorites. I'm your host, Leah Jones. This is the podcast where we talk to people about their favorite thing and get recommendations without using an algorithm. I'm here today with one of my original friends from the internet, Jocelyn Gayboy. How are you today, Jocelyn? I'm good. I'm good. It was nice out today, so that was good. Yeah, I was looking out the window into the park and I was like, there are... A lot of people in the park for air of Christmas Eve, like what's going on? And I looked at my phone and it said it was 57 degrees out and I did not go outside. (laughs) Well, we're kind of in the mode. It's winter. It's, you know, I get it. I didn't even get out of my nighttime pajamas today. I slept through my alarms. I got up at like 930. I'm not on vacation yet. And my body's <laughs> like, but you are. <laughs> but you are. Yes. Well, it's just so like, I don't know. It's just been great. I mean, there's sunshine today. And I think one other day that I can't remember what it is. That's my problem. I don't ever know what day it is. It's yeah. It's Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday. Yes. Okay. Like this last couple of weeks, I've had a really hard time like, fast forwarding a couple days. And then once I'm where I need to be, then backtracking a couple days. Yeah. Like it's, I just, 
I haven't had that problem since like the very beginning of the sadness. Yeah. So I just got a memory on my Facebook that 12 years ago was my Hanukkah party when the power went out and I took the party to St. Andrews and then made latkes in like the middle of the night. Were you at that party no. or were you at the birthday party a few months later where I served purple latkes? You might have been there a couple years before. It was it was your birthday. And I got on Twitter in like 2007. So like, I don't know if that would have been like 2008. Because for I got on Twitter because I was going to cover Looptopia. So we're taking some time we're going back for Chicagoist also going back. And the guy who my hookup or whatever, like I just I learned about Twitter. I got on Twitter. But then for months, I didn't really do anything with it. it not a lot of people were doing anything with it. And then whatever brought me back was when I started like who you Joe Sullivan, like, you know what I mean? Like started like following people and and Scott Smith, like started following people and and talking back and forth and stuff like that. So that, then I was, you know, I was in it to win it. And so we must, I don't know how we followed each, you know what I mean? Like, how did we find each other back in those days? I don't really know. Well, you found each other back in those days because there were uh, 30 people in Chicago using Twitter. And the assumption was if people know about Twitter, they're cool. And you want to know them. There weren't a lot of us. We all knew each other. We were all hanging out. Yeah. So early in that, I had a birthday party where I tweeted, like, if you need my address, come on over. And you were just like, are you being real? And you came over and you brought Play-Doh. And it was yeah. super. That's right. Very fun birthday party. I forgot about the Play-Doh. I, I remember that, though. Hey, man, birthday party. I got to bring something. Birthday party-esque. No, it was super fun. People played with it all night. It was great. Well, and I also think now that you're saying that, I recall, like, it would, it, it also would have been like, you were, you would have been, you would have followed Scott Smith and Andrew Hoff, right? So it was like the friend of a friend, like, okay, like, so now I'm going to see your stuff, like, in their feet or whatever, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you would have followed anyone on Gaper's Block or Chicagoist, a certain group of people at the Chicago Tribune. And then from there, like, there were, like, Four of us at Edelman who are really into Twitter at the time, Jackie and Clint, Rod, Scott, Amy, like, right. You can, I can think through like the people that were in that, that group at the beginning, Daniel, uh, who was Colonel Tribune. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. And he would, and so he would organize the Tribune tweet ups, the Colonel tweet ups. And, and you're just like, oh yeah, I guess we're all friends now. Yeah, tweet ups. Right? That just seems so I don't even know what I want to say. Like s- s- sweet? Like quaint, quaint, quaint. It seems so quaint now. You know what I mean? But like from the get, like in the what would that have been? Like the late nineties. I was on like some listserv for Tom Robbins. People who like Tom Robbins books. Yeah. So like I've always had friends some of whom I've never met, you know, I never met in person. So by the time this actually is a thing and people are like online dating and like whatever, like Facebook grouping and stuff, I'm like, right. Yeah. Real friends. I got it. Like, that's not weird to me, like legit real friends with people, you know? So I'm like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. How is your, how is your winter going? I don't know. Like, I think I, I really, I think I am hitting a like, come on. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. And it's just exacerbated by the fact that people are still, I was in a neighborhood group today, today or yesterday. And someone posted about, I wonder if I can put them on blast charcoal delights. I walked in, there were like, like patrons in there and, and employees, like no one was wearing masks. Right. So I kind of just, Hey, giving you the lowdown, this is what's going on. And I would say, I would say a third, I don't know if that's right. Cause they were just loud, um, of the people, Oh, you're a moron. You're stupid. You're a snitch. Um, Oh yeah. It was crazy. for what, for wanting people to wear masks Great. for telling with, and then the phrase kept being repeated without evidence, without evidence. And I would, 
Bef- I don't know who saw what before he finally, I think he just took it down, but I was yeah. like, yeah. And you're the kind of people that if we were walking around recording everyone, you'd be losing your mind. Like you just want someone to take pictures of ev- everything everywhere. So he has evidence. So like just that, just that like, and I, and, and the other thing too, is I'm like, I live in Chicago. This is an Albany Park neighborhood group. How do you live in Chicago? Like, I get it. Once you start getting to like Beverly and Jefferson Park, like once you start getting further and further out, like people are a little bit more like, you know what I mean? I expect that from small town, Wisconsin. I don't expect that like on a neighborhood board in the city of Chicago. In the city, right. I'm just like, wow. And then just so shitty and evil. So how, uh, how are things going so far? I'm all right. Core is always pretty much okay. Um, but I am just. Over a little, uh, yeah, a little feeling like actually legitimately fatigued, you know, because it's like, there aren't parks. Like it's not nice out. Like I can't go with my friends to the lake and hang out. That was a respite, you know, I could like see people in person and like talk to them and like, but like that's now off the table. Yeah, I definitely don't have as many friends with winter outside hang clothes. I guess I have the snow pants I bought last year. Oh, I do too. And I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be fun to sit in a park all bundled up. That's interesting, though. Snow pants fire, though? That, That could happen. Yeah, well, earlier today when it was 60 degrees, I was like, why are we not having a fire tonight? And then it was like, <laughs> the rain. I was like, oh, the rain is why we're not having a fire tonight. Got it. Because I dragged a tree home from the park a few weeks ago. Um, every day. I was just down by the lake at Addison. Every day. I was like already like, okay, well, I don't know if she really wants any wood at this point, but you need to come back here. You need to park over here. And then you need to go ham in this preserve. And like, yeah, I was like, we'll never have to buy wood again. I was like, no. No, those beavers that Robert keeps taking pictures of are making a lot of wood available. Is that I know that on New Year's Eve, there is a a concert of your favorite band coming up. Correct. What we're really here to talk about is the Avett brothers. Yes. The Avett brothers. Is it fair to say it's your favorite thing? Yeah. I mean, I I feel like I have a lot of side pieces to that, but like, this is definitely something that like I, I've become known for quote unquote. I'm an admin of like a three, 4,000 person fan group on Facebook. Um, So yeah, I'm pretty, it's definitely, it's, it's the, maybe the entree of your favorite things plate. Yeah, I probably have three different meals and they each have different entrees, but this is definitely like, this is substantial. This is definitely substantial. So for people who don't know the Ava brothers, what's what's your like elevator pitch? The, the right. Ava, you should listen to them because why? Right. So oh, the Ava brothers are being from Concord, North Carolina. Um, two actual blood brothers, a third, that was the core. Then they added a fourth, a cellist who's been with them. So those, those are the, what I think of as the Avid brothers. Um, they have touring musicians. I guess they would be classified as Americana. Um, I guess to me, that's the broadest, that's the best genre that we have out there. That is like that people use on a regular basis. But the thing that's great about them is whenever you think, you know what they are, they like come up with something entirely new, different take, different genre to, to sometimes to the delight and the chagrin of fans. Right? Sure. Like, oh no. Yeah. Um, but even if you listen to the Avid brothers, um, don't make any decisions until you see them live. All right. Good like, live show. That, that is the cool. That's literally how I came to them. So Tell me about that. What was, tell me about the first time you saw them live. Yeah. So my friend Catherine uh, went to school out East and she was all about the Avid brothers and I had no context for them. I just know this is this band that Catherine really likes the Avid brothers. 2010, I guess. Wow. That's crazy. Um, around my birthday. So beginning of March, her friend isn't coming. They have tickets. They were playing at the house of blues, which again, I think about that now I'm like the house (laughs) of blues. She has an extra ticket. Do I want to go? And we were, we were just leaving like uh, a meeting that we were at. And I'm like, 
oh, do I really want to go? And I, <laughs> I would do anything to be at the House of Blues right now, but I really hate the House of Blues. The yeah. House of Blues and the Aragon are kind of on my shit list. So I'm like, do I really want to go and deal with all that? And like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, okay, I'll go. So we go, we walked in, we weren't, we weren't there right at the beginning, which asterisk PS that show they played us. The opening song was a song that I've yet to hear live. And I also have a little story about how it relates to your house, but that's side, okay. All side right. bar. Um, so we come in a little bit late and from the jump, I was just like, what is even going on right now? Like there's these guys, they're singing. They're so full of energy. Like it, the place was just radiating with them and, and them on stage. I was just like, I don't, I don't even know. Like, okay. So I was immediately taken. I was immediately Uh in, you know, I had the buy-in. Um, and then, you know, song after song, then they, um, Seth, one of the brothers, uh, they generally have a moment in their show where each of the brothers kind of has like a song that they sing by themselves. Seth has a song called the ballad of love and hate. Mm -hmm. And it's again, something I could tell you all about that. But anyway, um, and I, I was piecing together this song with what was going on with me and a friend, ex-boyfriend. And I legit, it's not beyond me to cry at shows. I mean, I'm a crier. But I legit started crying. And I was like, what is even, I don't even know this band. I'm like, what is even going <laughs> on right now? Yeah. I mean, and I, I, I just was taken from them, taken of them from like, just, I, from the moment we set foot in that place, that was it. I was, I was done. And, uh, we left and I asked, uh, Catherine to send me <laughs> some music and I, that's it. Like I just kept d- digging into album after album after album. So, so it was love at first chord. I mean, in specific though, really truly like love at first sight. You know what I mean? It was literally like seeing them that I was like, I, I like, I, I don't even know. I really don't even know what's happening. You know what I mean? It was just really, really powerful. So what was the song you missed that night? Yeah. So the song that you've never seen live. No, the song. Well, cause it's really not um, a big, like upper song. Um, the song is called the lowering and I believe it's on four thieves gone. Um, and it's like a song about, them one of them it's they're like the Beatles it's like John and Paul they both wrote it one of them wrote it Mm -hmm. whatever you know um and like them losing a friend to suicide I think I mean I don't think you can really interpret it any other way and um and just like what that means and like their guilt and like what they could have done or not done Uh or whatever and I heard that song a bunch like I would listen to these uh, to this album and I would hear the song but I have this thing where I hear music and I digest and I process music first. So there are like, I literally was listening to Royals today by Lord. Like the second sentence, she says, um, cut my teeth on wedding rings, like in the movies or something like that. Uh-huh. And I was like, what you did? What? Um, or diamond rings. That's what I cut my teeth on diamond rings in the movies. And I'm like, how many times have I heard that song? How many times have I sung that song in my car? Right. And that's the first time I hear it. So I'm, I get music first. And, uh, I was at your house doing some work for you and I had shit playing. I had the Avis playing and for whatever reason, probably cause like when I do certain things, it's meditative. Like I'm, yeah. I'm focusing on whatever chore I'm doing. And so I'm not like whatever. And this song comes on and I legit, broke down I legit like knelt by your bed and like had a little had a little cry because I was like oh my god the song like wow. like like what like what like basically like at one point they say something about like and if someone tells you life's not fair tell tell them like well it ought to be uh-huh and I was just like I don't know so 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 then ever after 
I've wanted to hear the song live. I've never heard it live. And again, it's, it's really intense. It's not a song that like you'd even have in every show anyway, because it's, it's really poignant and intense and quiet and like whatever. But, uh, I so at some point in all of my craziness looked up the set list for that night. Mm. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? The lowering, they started that show off with the lowering. I was like, oh man, terrible, terrible. If I had known your heart was down Okay, so 10 years ago, almost 11 years ago, you see him at House of Blues. Um, and then your friend gives you... She gives me what I would give to anybody, uh, live volume three. And so it was recorded at a concert in North Carolina, but it pulls from like all the albums. So you're getting an introduction. I mean, at this point, not so much because they've had plenty of albums after but um you're getting a real introduction to like all these various albums of theirs and like what they're about and whatever so she gives me live volume three i dig in and then of course after that at some point i'm like i want another where's another what's the other what's that you know and just consuming as much as i can and when do you get then to see him live for a second time so the second time was I don't think it was that year. I think it was next September Mm -hmm. at the aforementioned Aragon. We were like front row for that though. Like we were really close. And at that point, actually, um, Bob Crawford, who is their bassist, his daughter has a brain tumor. Mm -hmm. And at that point he was, that was like the first of it. And so he wasn't, he wasn't playing bass. They got this guy, Paul DeFiglia, um, who's very awesome and amazing. And there's, Man, there's so many tangents. There's a video of me at a concert. You, there's not a video. You can hear me. Um, the Cubs had just won the R- World Series. And he's he's like a Cubs fan. I don't know if he grew up here or what. And so the, the show ends. And they're about ready to do like, they kind of have to shuffle around on stage to do like one, another song that they need to be in formation for. And so there's a moment. There's a moment of silence. And I almost never do this. There was a moment since, and I just go, we did it, Polly. And, and then Seth's like, Hey, we did it, Polly. And then the woman who plays the fiddle started playing go Cubs go anyway. Oh my gosh. That's so fun. Yeah. It's, it was. And then of course the whole crowd was all like, go Cubs go. Yeah. Uh, So that's 2016. Where was that show? That was in Waukegan. Okay. Some random ass theater. All right. So you get to go see them at the Aragon. Uh, To which we waited forever. We got in in the front row. My friend tells me about Paul DeFiglia and Bob Crawford and blah, 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 whatever. And we go to stand by the back door to like see them or get an autograph or picture. I don't, I don't know what the hell. And finally, she's like, it's weird. It was September, but it was so windy and cold and weird. And she's like, I can't stand out here anymore. I was like, all right. You know, and at this point, I'm like, I've done my time. Like, I'm just doing it. And eventually they come out because this is like back when they came out and like talked to people when it wasn't like so crazy and big and rant, you know, they talked to everybody. I kind of waited at the back because I just I always do that. I'm just I was like, oh, I'll linger. And uh, I get up to talk to them. And I'm like, thank you so much, blah, blah, blah. And I still have the hat to this day. I should just get rid of it because it's misshapen at this point. But I have this like bear hat, this like uh, uh-huh. little that I got from San, San Francisco. And Seth says, 
I like your toboggan. And I'm like thinking in my head, okay, I know what he's talking about out of context, but what? <laughs> like, a toboggan uh, is a slide, not a yeah, hat. Yeah, exactly. I was like, what the hell is he talking? Like what? And I, I say, thank you. And they're like, do you want a picture? And again, I have this thing where I tend to try to be like too cool for school. Like where like I, I want, it's not even too cool for school. What it is, is it's a delusion that at some point, like I want to be a normal person to you. I want to be your friend, right? So I would not meet a friend and be like, oh, let's take a selfie for prosperity. And Scott says, well, let let us at least sign your ticket. Uh-huh. To which they sign the ticket as time has passed and everyone gets pictures with them and everything. I'm like, why can't I just fucking take a picture with them? I'm like, I don't know, but you have a signed ticket, which is super cool. So yeah. 2011. I don't think we had front facing cameras yet on our phones. You're right. Cause right. You're right. People had to take them. Yep. Yeah. So someone else would have had to take it for you. So it was like a different. I thought about that. It's different. Cause as you're describing it, like, cause you and I have done stage door once for Dak Shepard. At the Chicago Theater. Which was insane and delightful. So fun. Very cold. But only like his second live show ever. So nobody knew to stage door. Right. Right. So we were out there with Robin and a few other people from our Facebook group. And they came out and they talked to everyone. You had a nice long conversation with them. And you have photos because I stood there being your paparazzi, not because you asked for them. Right. Right, 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 right. Yeah, because again, I would have never, I would have never asked him. So thank you and God bless you for doing the Lord's work and fucking getting pictures of us <laughs> together. So yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, and and after that, I was like, I don't know, do I need a stage door again for anyone? I thought I I think it's one of the only we stage doored once in high school for Maya Angelou. Oh wow, which was neat. Yeah. Wow! Wow! Yeah. And she was very much like a wave and into her car. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to say, and okay. yeah, Dr. Angelou was, she was very polite because it was a bunch of high school kids, right? A bunch of high school girls at a stage door in Terre Haute, Indiana. She was lovely. Yeah. So I've staged door for Maya Angelou and Dak Shepard. You've never, you've never Hamilton did? I tried to a couple times in New York. I was like, oh, this is the stage door. And it was a mob of people. Traffic stopped. It went out into the street. And I was like, oh, this is a this is dangerous. So I'm not going to do this. Right. And I guess I did. I stage door. I did go to the stage door at the band's visit. But it was because my friend was in the cast. So he was coming to get me to take me backstage. Right, right. So and I'm sure I have. Because I have met other celebrities. So it's not like I haven't, but I must right. have. So I'm not like I'm truly a purist yeah. <laughs> either. <laughs> and I don't have to, I no longer work in PR. So I no longer am professionally obligated to be like too cool to take pictures with celebrities or act like it's never happened. Right, 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 right. Like second city, same thing. Like Tom Hanks literally like walked right past me and I didn't, he wasn't really talking to I mean, he was not, not talking to us, but like I wasn't being addressed or anything. So I didn't say anything to him. Jack McGrayer came up and couldn't figure out how to turn his iPhone's sound like, like to silence it for the show. He's like, do you know how to silence this? And at that point, I didn't even have an iPhone. So I'm like, uh, no, not really. I'm like, here, let's look at it together. <laughs> <laughs> but I was never going to be like, oh my God, what's happening? You know, it was just kind of like an unspoken rule. Just uh -huh. don't, you know? Don't right, do that. to be cool. All right, so the Aragon, you meet them, they sign your ticket, you don't get a picture. No, everything's really spread out for a while. So then in 2012, in September, we go to see them in Indianapolis. This is like my first foray. Uh, is it 2012 and then maybe 2013 I go to Grand Rapids so I'm with Catherine for all of this okay like, I'm yeah. with her for all of this like these these you know year so it's like I basically get to see them once a year okay yeah everything my life changes when I some I don't even know like how how I decided this or came to this conclusion. I don't even know. But in February, late February of uh, 2014, they play a three night run at a really small theater in St. Louis. 
And I'm like, St. Louis is five hours away. That's it. That's it. It's five hours away. I'm like, so I'm doing this. Like I'm, you know, Oh, Catherine can't come with blah, 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 whatever. I'm like, get a hotel room. I'm making this happen. Yeah. And a, a three night run where they like maybe repeat five songs Mm -hmm. in three shows. Right. Is incredible and crazy and we where i got to hear like songs basically chase songs i mean the lower ring wasn't my only chase song you know songs that i've never what's heard. a chase like, song like a song you really want to hear live okay and oh, so you're chasing it yes you're, okay. yeah, you're, chasing right. it. you're trying to make it happen um but a lot of them got knocked off the list like a lot like a lot of crazy like that four thieves gone album there there's a uh, an eponymous track on it and the thing they did like it was one of those things where we're like oh my god I can't believe I'm seeing this right now like yeah. literally they started it was like the en- last song of the encore they started with four of them and as the song go- as the lyrics of the song go because they the, the thieves start disappearing one by one they would leave the the they would leave the stage and I was like, what is going on? So anyway, it was insane and amazing. But that was the moment where I started to meet the people that I had been in a fan group with yeah, in person. Right. So like, that's when I started to like lock down, like I'm friends with these people to this day, you know, like that's where I started to like lock. We went to like Cahokia together. We had a little field trip. Uh, my friend Lauren and I went up in the, uh, I'm so mean, but it was funny. Yeah. We went up uh, to the arch and it, have you ever been? No. So you basically get in these little capsules that look like they probably were built in 1950. Yeah, exactly. So I'm good. Right. I'm good. We're, and then you're in, around it. Like, and there's a, another couple in there with us. So it's tight quarters. She is all losing her mind. The lady, <laughs> the lady with the dude she's losing her mind and i'm like ah what are we let's do this like is there how open is this capsule it's not and i think that's the other going the other way of scariness you're literally enclosed in like a little with three other people in a cement arch yeah and what and it's super weird because it's right because it's an arch so i don't really even know how the physics of it work but because of that you kind of go cha-chunk cha-chunk Cha-chunk. So it like stair steps over. Yes. And it's old. It, it seems like it's old as fuck. Yeah. She was losing her mind. <laughs> that wasn't, she did not enjoy that part. Of I the experience. can't feel my bones thinking about it. So I'm going to take a pass on it forever. Yeah. It would be bad. Yeah. No, I did. She... I did the towers in um, Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, which is like a little elevator up. And then you have to walk down a spiral staircase. You like go out on the roof and then you come down this like spiral staircase. That was my friend that I was with. She was not afraid at all. And I was white knuckling it the whole way. And I was just like telling people to to pass me. And I was could hardly get down the tower. That I was happened to terrified. my mom at the Statue of Liberty. That exact thing. She, she's like, I, I couldn't move. I had to tell people to pass me. I had to tell people to go around me. I just, I, I was paralyzed. Like finally a guy, like basically like dragged my ass up there. Like, cause I like helped me get up because I couldn't, I couldn't do it. So that's, oh man, that sucks. Well, spiral, why spiral? You know? Well, because you can one, see down the middle. Like, or no, it was, I, I, the things I remember are, there were these like, thing, like windows in the turrets. So you could like step off of the stairs into a window and just like catch your breath. Like there oh. were these like little escape <laughs> moments. Weird. The lighting was in the handle of the stairs. And so there, I remember the banister being hot because there were lights in it. So I was like, I'm afraid because all I can picture is myself like going blah, 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 very right. fast down the stairs. Right. The handles are hot to the touch. They're metal and they're hot. Not like burning you and not every inch of them, just like the inches where there's lights. My friend Kate was such a gem. But it, <laughs> so all I'm saying is knowing what I now know about myself. Right. I would take a pass on the arch. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I felt bad because it, it a little bit was like, there's literally nothing I can do for you. Like we're in this, like where there's no getting off this thing. Like we are taking this to the top. That's it. Yeah. And you know then, then you have to take it back down on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Yeah. But I think at that point it was kind of like, at least it was a known entity. She knew what we were getting into versus being like, I'm sorry, what do we have to do yeah. <laughs> to go up there? What, what, what are you proposing? But the top of it is wild. So they give you the whole spiel and like, so apparently like it has, I think it's four inches. I think it's two inches on each side that it can move because of the wind, you know, you wouldn't want it to tip over or anything like that. Right. And the lady was like, you know, Oh, you know, there's not much wind today. And I, again, I don't say this, like I'm scared, but like, I'll tell you what I was, I had to get my sea legs. I could barely, I like, there was something about it where I was like, I feel very uh, like unsteady up here. Like, I'm like, I think there's more wind than she thinks that there is because this thing's moving. So you meet people in person, you have a uh, shared trauma of going well, up I in this. <laughs> I shared her trauma. I did not have a trauma. Um, but yeah, we went out to dinner. I mean, there's people, uh, one of the, the, a couple that I met, I've literally never seen them in person again, but I love them to death. Amanda and Lynn, like fucking love them. And that was what was weird. So I, the other thing I tend to do, especially at these three night runs is like, when you just, first, you just got to get in the building. So like, if you can't get the seats you want, like at least make sure you get a ticket. Right. So then I'm down there and I'm like, I don't really like this ticket. So I go on Craigslist and I'm like trying to get a better ticket, a close a ticket. That's the thing. I am a spoiled, spoiled Ava fan. Like I want to be close. Front row. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I find one and we, me and this dude meet. And it turns out this dude was sitting like right next to Amanda and Vin for the last show. So like this guy, like this, this, like everything's kind of like coming together, like synchronicity, like, cause I'm like, you know, it's always like, oh, is this going to be a real ticket? Blah, 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 blah. Right. right. It's like, oh no, he's already in like Flynn with them. So some of my closest Avid friends, for lack of a better word, I, that's where I started to like meet them, go out to dinner, like, you know what I mean? Just have yeah. like real human interactions. And then that was, I, I got bit by the bug. Is that when you started buying the posters or making sure you get all the posters at a show? Isn't that a thing you like to do? Yes, I do. Um, I definitely have all three from that one. I definitely didn't get one on my first show. I have that one now. I paid a little bit more than like 150 bucks rather than 30, which is what you get them for at the shows. Uh, I have my first show. I don't have my second show at the Aragon, which is actually widely sought after. It's very crazy. Like, it's even, it's even huge. Like the format is weird. I don't have that one. I don't even think I have an Indianapolis one from wow. 2012. 12. All oh, right. Cause 2013 was Grand Rapids. That makes more sense. Yeah. So I do, I get all three posters. And of course, PS, as we get later down the line, then the real, Oh, you know what? I don't think they had one, but then the real gem is to get in line early enough. If they have, if there's a three night run to get the uncut, Ah, okay. Get all of them in one. Um, so yeah, I get the posters from that. Yep. And then at some point, Louisville, Kentucky is on the on the calendar for October uh -huh. of 2014. So three night run, amazing, right? And so I'm like, yeah, we're doing this. Like I I, I got the Holy Spirit at St. Louis. So I'm like, okay, we're just doing this. Yeah. Well, that's a summer. Then my dad gets super sick dies on October 11th, 2014. My tickets are for like, I think it's 16, 17, 18 or 17, 18, 19. Of October? Yeah. So, so he dies. We do all the funeral shit. I, you know, I'm kind of helping with all that. And now like, it's kind of done, right? Like all the things that like kind of need to be taken care of. And I'm like, and I'll be honest with you. Like I was relieved. I was like, I, I was very glad that it worked out like that. Like, sorry, pa, but if it was going to happen, I'm glad that like it got to happen where I could still go. So I'm asking people, I'm like, do you think I should still go? I'm like, I feel like I've taken, like I, I've done everything I can for my mom. Yeah. I really want to do this. I mean, you basically stepped out of your life for a year when your dad was dying. 
Yeah, half a year, I would say. Yeah. And everyone's like, you should go, you should go. So I go. And so it was already magical because it was a three night run. I don't know if they repeated any songs that time. So I added, I added way more chase songs, right? Where it was like, oh my God, oh my God. And just had like a straight spiritual experience. And I was like, well, I have them all the time. But like, like there's a song called November Blue. It's about a man leaving you know, like he always missed this person that he, you know, never worked out or whatever. I don't, that's not, that's ish, ish. Right. Um, so it's about like people breaking up or whatever, but they play the song. I don't know if I had ever heard it, but at that point, to be honest with you. So maybe my first time hearing it question mark. Um, but I just get overwhelmed. Like there's so many other songs that would have made more sense for me to like break down, have the dad moment. Yeah. But my mom's, birthday is in November and blue is my dad's favorite color. And so for whatever reason, even though the lyrics really didn't make sense, right. In this particular, you know, moment, it was just definitely like, that was the dad moment. That was like the grounding moment. Like, okay. And then just everyone loved me. Right. Like all these people that I know now are like, just, you know, taking care of me and loving on me. And like, yeah, that you get to see your internet friends or your, they're your friends who you know through a shared interest on the internet. I won't, I won't call them your internet friends, but they're not people you can see regularly in Chicago and they're not people who could support you by going to your dad's funeral, but you get to see them in that immediacy of the funeral and, and without any of the extra family stuff. Right, right, right. And in doing something that we all enjoy. If I told you I love you, would it change what you see? And if I were leaving, would you stay? I know you saw them. My sister was at a show you went to in Bloomington Normal in like an arena. In Bloomington is, why did I feel like we were in Peoria? It could have been in Peoria. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. my Rain and Bob got seats. They like walked up and got tickets that night and they were kind of like up and right seated up in like a mezzanine or something because that's how they like to enjoy a concert is with yeah. chairs yep and and you had gotten there early and you were like on the rail yeah like I on, was on the, the stage rail. yeah yep I was on the rail for that show that actually is the if I dare say it online if I dare put this out on the universe that was the only time where I had ever gone to a show old uh crow medicine show open and I'd never seen them before which is its own experience. And I don't know if the boys were sick that night or what, but like, I was like, did your opener just slightly, was I slightly more into your opener than you? Like, I couldn't even fathom that that was a possibility, but the energy was, I don't know. I don't know why it was different, but I was like. Yeah. I mean, I think kinda, Rain and Bob loved it, loved it. They had seen them for the first time. They had gone to see Reverend Horton. Oh, okay at like a I think at a festival and and the Ava brothers opened for Reverend Horton or vice versa they were on right. the bill together but Rev, I, and, and I'm probably getting the name wrong so now I'm just like really getting the name wrong but I believe it was called Reverend Horton yeah Reverend Horton's heat okay but that's when they were introduced to the Ava brothers and then that's when when they saw the show in Peoria that they went yeah one and then as we've been talking, I remember like, oh, in that beginning, like once a year thing, I went to one at Northerly Island. Oh, cool. Cause that's my cause at that one, Catherine lost her shit because they play the song called It's the Beach It, if the, if it's the beaches. And at that point, I have seen that song several times since but at that point like that wasn't a show that wasn't a song they were really playing anymore yeah. on shows so she was just like oh my god it's if, if it's the beaches like and I was like okay like, I wasn't I didn't know enough at that point I was like okay cool cool like what are you freaking about so um 
and then in Indianapolis, there was definitely two Indianapolises. I think one of them, maybe three. One of them I went to later, like by myself. I took the fucking what the hell is that thing? Oh, the bus, the dollar mm-hmm. bus, mega the, uh, bus, mega, mega bus. bus. Yeah. yeah, I took that to Indianapolis, like a weirdo. Um, so yeah, point being, like I saw him in Waukegan, small theater. See him in the Chicago runs, small theater. It, I'm. It's hard for me. I saw him in Madison at kind of a little big, like at a field. Like it was like a almost like a oh, soccer like a field. Like a oh. Kretsch's field, C-K-R-E-G-E-S. So I've definitely seen them places, big places. But at this point now, I understand for me, I want a more intimate experience. So you, you want to do three night runs. You want to do small theaters. And didn't you go, wasn't like, didn't you go to Texas for a documentary? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So Judd Apatow and Michael Bonafiglio, he's the director and Judd's kind of like the producer or whatever. They make this documentary called May at Last about them recording their album True Sadness. Uh, which has a song called No Hard Feelings, which is about death and dying. And it's yeah. cra- crazy good. So they're premiering it at South by Southwest in Austin. And I don't know, oh, you had to like send an email and like get a t- like, I don't know, you had to like get a ticket or something like that, like a free ticket. And so I get one and my friend Kim and her husband get one and my friend Michelle gets one. They live, uh, Kim and, they live in Warsaw, 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 Indiana. Michelle lives in Bloomington. And somehow I get going, I'm like, come on, you guys. I'm like, we don't have to fly. Like, maybe we can drop. Cause we're all like, we're broke. Like we can't be doing this. Like what the fuck? And I'm like, you know, let's, and then I gave up and then they worked behind the scenes. And Kim's like, Aaron has hotel points. Like we can stay in a Marriott. We get Michelle on board somehow. So I take the Metro down to Michelle in Bloomington. They drive all, all, all of us up in, um, in Bloomington. They drive from Warsaw and we drive like, to Texas in one shot. We all drove. I mean, we all took turns wow. driving, but like one shot we get there. Like they, I think they take, took a nap or something. I couldn't, I mean, once I'm up, like I couldn't really. So like, and our friend Lauren lives there. She just moved to Louisiana, but she lived in Austin and another friend, like, so we kind of got the second group, like people that we don't, didn't normally see at our Northern shows. Like we, now we got the Southern people, right? So yeah, we went, we watched the documentary. I was, I was in the middle, you know, a theater often has like a left, right in a middle. Yeah. I was in the middle on the end and literally the line of seats that I'm in, like looks direct, like the brothers and co are, are like to my right. Yeah. And it was amazing. Oh, that's right. I almost forgot. Oh my God. So, so I, the, there's just so many times in the movie, like I'm bought, like I'm just uh, like wrecked in the best way. Afterwards they do a Q and a, and I get up, other people get up, a couple of people ask some like questions, whatever. I get up to the mic and literally must leave my body. Cause it's like, I, it's like when I give a talk, like I almost like forget what I said so I get up there and I'm like referencing other work that they've done and and how do they feel like blah blah blah. and literally at some point like I come out of my body I'm like how long have I been fucking talking right now like I'm like I'm forgetting that like it's not them and me having conversation you're not hanging out that right that there are other people having conversation and they I mean it would they were amazing and gave a very nice answer and blah, blah 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 but then like I think someone later on like one of the fan groups like just made mention about like people talking too long or whatever. And I'm just like, ah, fuck, that has to be me. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. (laughs) But that's on YouTube too. (laughs) I guess at least there's a record of what you said. Right. Exactly. And more important, a record of what they said back to you. Correct. Yeah, it exists. And then we, Oh, we went out that night because they were playing in a small place. We went out that night, did all that business. And then we literally turned around and drove all the way back the next day. So. Wow. 36 hours, 48 hours. Something like that. Right. Yeah. Like 48 hours. 
When did you join the group versus when did you become an admin of the group or did you start the group? Well, yeah, that's what I'm trying to <laughs> think about exactly how to talk about it. So there was another big group. So here's that- the thing, like if, if for political reasons, you don't want to talk about the Facebook group because oh, oh no, you don't want I- to. No, I can totally talk about it, but this, just the begin, just the beginning is weird. So there was another big group that everyone was in. It was like one of, there were like two, there was like one that was kind of smaller and like this dude ran. And then there was like the big one that like everyone was in and where you could get posters and tickets and do all that business. But Buy, people, sell, trade. Just everything. You know what I mean? Well, that group got like, there were varieties of things that were weird about it. Like there was like a couple, you know, like how people have like man crush Monday and stuff like that, where there were like two different days, Saturday and how was Scott Friday? I don't know, but people would just like po- post pictures of them. And some of them were like fairly like suggestive, like just like Scott's ass. Right. Yeah. I never said anything. Cause I'm a little bit of the like scroll past type of thing, but I didn't, I didn't, I understood why people were like, but why though? Like, why are you doing this? Like, that's, this isn't what this band, like what? So that was one of the things that, that kind of started it all. And then like the admins just started like censoring people, erasing threads, deleting comments, uh, all this. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not how I roll. That's not, that's not the deal. So yeah. someone else goes and they start this other group rejects in the attic. And so I don't know, we must get invited or something like that. So like I go over there and, and then like after a couple of days, the woman's like, Oh, these and now from here on out, who knows what's true, what's not true, whatever. But like, they're threatening to like out me at work out of what, I don't know. But like, like this is just getting, they're getting nasty. And me and my friend Steve were like, well, they are not winning. Like we, we will admin this group. This isn't going away. We're not going to make, this isn't going to like, no, we love this. Like this is happening. You didn't get outed at work for being a fan of a Americana band. I don't know. It was, that's so, weird. Who knows? But like but, being threatened to be doxxed, even if you're like, I don't understand what's like getting doxxed sucks. And so if she felt threatened, she felt threatened. Well, right. And I don't even know exactly if it was doxxed. I don't know. They were being shitty to her. Let's just put it that way. And, and we were like, we're not, no, we love it here. Like this is happening for us. And so we stepped up and started to admin the group. Maybe that was 2015. Now it is what it is. Uh, Rejects in the Attic is a song by the Ava Brothers. Okay. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just, it's like the other one was in that we talk about the band, we talk about lyrics, shows coming up. Oh no, I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to, for, you know, like literally like waiting for tick, like waiting for the moment that tickets will be sold, you know? And, and as it's grown, that was one of the things that we've been always very, very, um, about, like, we're not censoring anything. Talk about whatever you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be the Ava brothers. We ask people to stay away from the politics because even though the Ava brothers are like such a, loving kind generous smart uh spiritual band like you know apparently there's still people who think not wearing masks is cool so you know we ask people to stay away from politics or whatever um but for the most part people can talk about whatever they want but it's really truly it's one of the reasons that that's intangible it's it's hard to explain to people that like the being in recovery i have found a set of circumstances that I feel like you don't find many places, right? Like inherently when you, if you're friends with someone, not everyone in sobriety, but like if you're friends with someone, like there's an instant bond, there's instant trust. People go out of their way to help you. You know what I mean? Like there's just a lot, like we don't operate like society does. Well, this, I found the exact same with these Avid fans. Like People have sent people to show. Someone sent me once money once so I could go to Kettering, Ohio to see a show. I was like, because I didn't have money. And she was like, no, I just really want you to go see the show. People gave me money for Nico. Yeah. I was fucked up about all that. Like people take care of one another in, in a variety of ways. And again, like there's been a couple of people who have been assholes and shitty and not deserving, but by and large, everyone has been. And by and like, and generally there's like, there, there's spirituality there like uh, of whatever sort it is like I think there are a lot of Christians um but I think they're Christians I know I know some of them they're Christians in the good Christian way in the in the way of actually following Christ and being kind to people and helping them and wanting them to be able to eat and have a place to live and shit so there's that there's just like this faith and this this 
integrity and like all many times I have remarked like, Oh, this reminds me just like of how I interact with people and how I've come to be with people in recovery. Yeah. And I think both having two of those, having one of them is rare. Having two places like that is mind blowing to me. Like I I would never have guessed like from a band that I would get like all these friends and experiences and, and all of that. Like it's, it's yeah, definitely... in a community with integrity and kindness and mutual caring, all the things that you want from community, like that you want from society that you can see it modeled, which at least makes it possible to imagine it at a greater scale. Yeah. And you know what, here's the thing I actually just occurred to me as I'm talking to you, like, I have a pretty funny feeling that like, the Pearl Jam community is that way with one another. Dave Matthews band people are that way with one another. Right. But i would never been in a fan group. i would never been into a band. Like my three tops are obviously the Beatles, but I've never been in any Beatle fan group or whatever. Local band Frisbee. Yeah. But again, I was at the bottom. <laughs> like, like we watched that. You know what I mean? Like there was no other fan group except for my like, three friends who were all cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs about them like me. Um, and then this. And so this is the first time like widespread people across the country, across right. the globe. My yeah. friend named Claire, she lives in England. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, like this was the first time that like, I saw that that was a thing that could happen yeah. just by liking the same band. Cause I find that in, I would say my, the subset of fans of how did this get made that I, hang out with I'm in a group that's not like the big group but I'm in the group that like split off and is like the feminist women admin group yeah right yeah and those people are amazing and fun and like we've all got together before a show at the Chicago theater so like a bunch of us have met in person and and um there's been you know at some point during the pandemic Someone in that group said, hey, you know, like my best friend and I just like broke up and some other things have happened. I'm really bummed out. Would anybody watch a movie with me tonight? Like and do a live a chat in the group. And people are like, yeah, we gotcha. And now there's like weekly movie watching double headers every night different people get different nights that they're in charge of choosing the movies and it's become a group where people get together every night watch movies hit play at the same time and do a chat together and it's because someone felt safe enough who had met some of us in person at a live show and she felt like this is a place where if i say i'm hurt and i'm scared and i'm lonely People will just kind of like give me some time and not in a pity way, but in a like, yeah, we love you. We'll, and it's become, it's, I've only watched a couple movies with the group, um, but it's every night they're like, they'll publish a weekly schedule. Here are the people that are choosing movies on these nights. Like we press play at this time. We press play at this time. They're in this like, and they're not all bad movies. It is, it's really been powerful to see this community come together, especially as COVID stretches on and we can't do live shows and we can't. So I hear you on finding, like finding your people through the door of a, of a artist or a hobby is phenomenal. Well, and if the thing is, especially this last year, maybe year and a half, um, maybe two, I don't know. There comes a time where I'm like, fuck Facebook. This is bullshit. They suck so hard. I'm piecing out. I have friends who don't have Facebook. They live good lives. And then I'm like, but you have people that you are literally only connected by Facebook. Like I have, I have friends now from even land that I have their phone number and their address and right. Like we could do, we can do whatever, but like the majority of those people are, you know what I mean? Like that's where I get it. And I'm like, well, how could I even like, how can I do it? How can I leave Facebook when, you know, we're not going to create a Avid parlor. Like what the fuck? Yeah. And I feel the same way. And I think our, I feel like our armchair group has gotten to like a really cool vibe. 
you know, and Robin has come on to help admin that group with us. Well, um, and, and that's where I even got the, like, let's meet up. Yeah. From my experience of meeting up at Avid shows. Here's where we're going to be. Who wants to hang? Who wants to meet each other for the first time? Yeah. And Robin, who's an admin, we met that night. So, so you think, what was the album again that people should start with if they've never listened? Live three, live yeah. number three. Live volume three. Another one might be Emotionalism. My two favorites are Mignonette and Four Thieves Gone. Um, and if, if you can indulge me. So Mignonette, I, I got this because I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to forget it. So there's a book called Custom of the Sea by Neil Hansen. And this story is about the ship, the Mignonette and how they went sailing and everything went to shit. And they ended up eating the one of the dudes on the boat. And the, the thing about this book is that previous to this, when shit like that happened, you'd come back, you'd tell people about it, but like you weren't, held accountable for murder or anything because literally you never would have done that unless it was the most extreme desperate you know no one wants to yeah. eat people right like like it it would have to be the most insanely desperate thing ever in life and this was the first time that people came back the captain like told the story like this is what happened and they locked their asses up well two, there was three of them then there was two of them and i think the second dude like ripped to, to bring back that term snitch, he like ratted on the other dude and made it sound like they could have done something else when they couldn't have done anything else. Like, oh my God. like they were screwed. So there's a song. I, I used to hate it. And now I just lean into it. And I think it's amazing. There's an instrumental song on the record. And it's really like, it's really, oh, it's just at one point, like it literally they're playing music. It's, it's uh, an instrumental, but it, literally at one point it like sounds like someone is like dying you know what i mean like just like dying at sea you know what i mean like yeah, yeah it's like crazy and the thing is at some point though like you hear you hear someone throw a beer bottle in a in a garbage can you know how like it does when you throw it and there's already glass in there and it hits the glass you hear that at one point um it is called complaints de montalant morant Lament of a Dying Sailor. Mm. So it's super haunting and super weird and like super cool and weird. Um, so yeah, if Push came to show, I think I would probably say Mignonette is my favorite album. But Custom of the Sea Man, I had to get it when I heard that that's what the, the you know, that was all about. Yeah. And it's a riveting read. It really truly is. It's, it's. Yeah. And I just, I just Googled, um, like what does custom of the sea mean? And it's a custom practiced by officers and crew, right? So among these customs is the practice of cannibalism among shipwrecked survivors by the drawing of lots to see who is to be killed and eaten. So you draw straws. Well, this guy was already like super, like he had like lost his mind and started drinking seawater. Like, like he was, on death's door they didn't have to like pick straw like he was unconscious half the time you know what i mean like it wasn't going to end well for him in any in any way you look at it. yes i would venture to say it did not end well for no, him it did not but it wasn't going to anyway and that was kind of his other thing like this not only was this, we were desperate but like this was coming any like this guy wasn't it's whatever 18 you know when is it the 18 1884 so it's not like medicine and they're gonna get them back to the mainland and they're gonna revive them you know what i mean with some great super drug yeah 1884 what are some other good um trivia that you like about the avet brothers 
Oh, huh, wow. Trivia I like about the Ava, Ava brothers. Well, Seth and Scott are also mad talented. It's I don't know if you know the band Trip Shakespeare. There's two brothers in that band too, Matt and Dan Wilson. Dan Wilson was head of Semisonic, so you probably I've know heard that. Of, yeah. But like Dan went to Harvard. Like, so these guys and like is a painter and stuff like that. And that's how these guys are. Like Scott has this like insane exhibition of art up right now in the Helton Gallery, which I think is in North Carolina. And like Seth has designed posters. Like they just have they're Renaissance man, men, you know what I mean? But they live, you know, when they, when they're in North in, in Concord, like they live on farms and have chickens and chop wood. And like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just crazy. There's a track on one of their albums after like the album ends and there's a lot of space. And then you hear, and it's Jim Abbott, who is a musician in his own right. That's the dad. Yeah. Their grandfather was a minister, Clegg Abbott, Abbott. And I have his book somewhere here. It's called for all the people. Uh, he was a minister um and it's a tape of them when they're like kids like five six something and he's just like I don't know if your parents did this but just they're like let's put on a let's put the tape player recorder on and just start recording shit and he's asking them questions about like their favorite songs and like Scott's going for the first time Scott's going to a different school than his brother uh-huh or or maybe maybe Seth is joining Scott and like Scott says something like you know but if you see he's so little saying this he's like but if you see me don't hug me and kiss me and their sister's like Scott <laughs> like no, like why do you don't like that's not nice you know um so it's really really it's really really funny that like there's this like little insight to their like actual childhood them goofing around there's another one i don't i think it's on oh no it's on it's on this one it's on mignette called quasi commentary and it's them on the side of the road with their van or whatever Uh uh-huh and they're obviously like trying to fix something or whatever. And their friend, Causey, it's not either one of them. Like he's like, we're here on the side of Route 20. Um, Scott, a- Scott Avid was driving the Ford Taurus before the problem and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, just kind of like giving a thing. And then all of a sudden you hear him hysterically start laughing. He's like, we just got sprayed with turkey shit. And loses his mind. I, I'm assuming a truck came by. It had to have been a turkey truck. Like, I don't know anything about that. But just like, and he says it again. We just got sprayed with turkey <laughs> Like, just loses his mind. And I'm like, that, and it's just this little, that's it. This little interlude. And then, actually, while he's talking, you hear Scott playing his banjo. You hear this, like, this line of music. And then the next song is actually that riff is in the the next song on the album. So one line wonder is what he's noodling around with as Causey is telling you all the, you know, giving you all the details about them being on the side of route two. What haven't I asked you about the Ava brothers that you think people should know? Oh, this is both. Uh, compelling and actually possibly a call to action. So where Hallie gets, Hallie is Bob Crawford, the bassist, their third brother, essentially uh, his daughter with a brain tumor. So where she gets treated is at St. Jude's. And so over the years, this is another, this is another Avid fan thing. Like we have raised countless, you know, tens of thousands of dollars for St. Jude's over the year, just in like solidarity and like to show our affection or or, or wanting to support the thing that supports them. You know, Um, they did create their own charity called the Press On Fund. Um, So if anyone wants to though, either St. Jude's or the Press On Fund are kind of like our thing. Um, But yeah, so you remember when I was like, oh, Paul DeFiglia, like was the second show. So I, I don't know if Bob, played that first show or not to be honest with you because again I wouldn't have known so Catherine was like oh yeah this isn't really this isn't their normal bassist and I was like okay like I you know what I mean like I didn't know and um I probably saw I don't know two or three shows with Paul DeFiglia well it turns out which is great is that people end up loving him 
So mm-hmm. even when he's, even when Bob comes back, like they kind of keep him, like he does more string work or he does piano or, you know, whatever. So he, he stays around for quite some time. That's nice. But just, I don't know, just that that's a thing that like, and unfortunately, cause she'd been going for scans and everything like that. And I, she just went back for another one that wasn't good. So again, lots of thoughts and prayers out to them just because it's like such a, is there a cover you wish you could hear them interpret? This funny. This it comes up many, many times in threads and conversations. Seth does an, incre- an incredible Sam Cook. So I, he can do anything from him. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's a really good question. Like a song I just absolutely, I think it would be fun to hear him do Domino by Van Morrison. Mm-hmm. It's so funny. Like I want to go and like, look, cause I'm sure I've commented on this before with all of my grand ideas. Um, basically like any song that I love, I would love to hear them cover. They all, they also do um, like they do gospel songs sometimes. Like there's a song called in a Gar- in the garden. And there's another song called uh, down by the river to pray so good like so so good um so even maybe more stuff like that or oh yeah it's hard I, i'm literally gonna get, get done with this and then i'm gonna be like oh why didn't you think of like these uh-huh. four songs that you love in your heart of hearts but yeah we even when i think about that i'm like i don't know there couldn't i can't imagine something they would cover that i'd be like oh that's ambitious you shouldn't do that right Cause it, they just, that's the hardest thing about talking about them to people. What kind of music is it? Right. And so at the beginning, like, I feel like they were all, all always referenced to Mumford and Sons. Mm-hmm. Well, David's have been doing music long before Mumford and Sons. Also, I get why sometimes people would say that, but like, I, that's not, I don't know. That's just not a good touchstone for me. Like that's not like, almost acapella songs. Then there's songs where like, Seth is like shredding on the guitar. I mean, like straight up on the electric guitar and shredding. Not like Prince, like not at probably the level. But, sure. like, but Seth is one of those people that I think if you didn't, like you would be surprised. It's like, holy shit, that guy can play guitar. Like a motherfucker. It, you can listen to it online. Like go get live volume three. Feel good about yourself. And then just wait. Till the day when we can all go back to fucking concerts again. Yeah. And then go take yourself and see yourself some Ada Brothers. Like truly, like, and I've heard many, many people say it since then. Like, yeah, I really like the Ava Brothers, but, or my boyfriend was sick of me talking about the Ava Brothers. He went to a show with me and he uh-huh. was sold. He's in like 100%. If, if you're even remotely curious, like that, that to me is like the, the thing. Like live volume three and then just go see the show. Yeah. And what's this New Year's Eve thing? So New Year's Eve, every New Year's Eve, they do a show and in, in North Carolina somewhere, somewhere. So it's back at home. I've never gone. I've never like either have not mostly probably have not had the money, like whatever. I just have never gone, but it's like a thing like to go to New Year's Eve is like a thing. Well, the, this past year they've done two shows from the, something motor speedway somewhere in North Carolina. I can't think of what it is. Uh, live streamed. Right. And people got to go, they drove in. So some people got to see them live and then the rest of us just watched. Well, this is just completely, there's no drive in. Like this is just completely live streamed recorded. I mean, I have no idea like how this, like how Dax figures into this. He's the, no, he's the MC. Right. But like, so he's know. like introducing bands and stuff. But I, but I think some of this is pre-recorded. Like I think they, like the Avits might have already played their stuff. I don't Probably. know. Probably, it's like a mystery to me. So I'm just curious. I just I'm very curious to see how like this actually gets ex- executed. Well, Jocelyn, this has been fantastic. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. And um, send me links. We'll do it up in the show notes. Merry Christmas. We're recording this on uh, the night before Christmas Eve. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you, too. I'm, I'm, I, I've sent out Christmas cards. and They were fantastic. Things. What? I got mine. Thank you. Oh, you did? Oh, good. Yes. And that's one of the things I'm wishing to people is like, you know, a year filled with truth. We've been lacking that for a while. Kindness. 
We've been lacking that for a while. And then depending on who you are, sometimes you get love. Sometimes you get hugs. Sometimes you get in-person recovery meetings. And sometimes you get concerts and AVID shows. So like, I, I want all of those things to be back. A-S-A-P. Thank you for listening to Finding Favorites with Leah Jones. Please make sure to subscribe and drop us a five-star review on iTunes. Now, go out and enjoy your favorite things.